Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through National 5 trig graphs. Okay, so at the end of this video, everybody will be able to sketch the trig graphs. Um, you'll be able to um, describe the period and the amplitude of each graph, and you'll be able to move the graph, so shift it horizontally and vertically. Okay, so let's start with a sine wave. Now, these are waves, okay? So this is the first full cycle of the sine wave, but it just keeps on going. So there's another full cycle between 360 and 720 degrees, and the same, there's a cycle before it as well. Okay, let's look at some defining features of the sine, sine graph. It has roots at 0, 180, and 360. It's the same to call it zeros as well, if you would prefer. Okay, so which means it cuts the x-axis at 0, 180 and 360 degrees. Okay, it has a maximum value of 1 and that occurs at 90 degrees. And it has a minimum value of negative 1 and that occurs at 270 degrees. The period, it's, like I said, it's got a first full cycle between 0 and 360 degrees, so it repeats itself every 360 degrees. Okay, and it's got an amplitude of 1, so that's half the vertical distance between the maximum and minimum values. Right, the cosine wave and sine wave are very, very similar. They're only 90 degrees apart. So let's have a look at some of the defining features of the cosine wave. So this one has zeros at 90 and 270, so it crosses the x-axis at 90 and 270 degrees. Its maximum value is at 1, and that occurs at 0 and 360 degrees. And its, min it's, sorry, its minimum value is at negative 1, and that happens at 180 degrees. Like the, the period of this graph is from 0 to 360 degrees. It repeats itself again after that, as we've discussed. And it's got an amplitude of 1, again, half the, dis the, the distance between the maximum and minimum values. The tan graph is totally different from the sine wave and the cosine wave, and that's because it's actually sine divided by cos. Okay, so it's going to be completely different. It's not as well used if you like throughout it so if your, your child's going to concentrate on any, any graphs it would be sine and cos not to say that tan is any less important but this one has um, roots at 0 and 180 degrees okay which again is different there's no maximum value okay and that's because it as much as that graph is getting close, as close as possible to 90 degrees, it never ever reaches it and it just keeps on going. So its maximum height is actually um, infinity and its minimum value is um, negative infinity, which is why we say that undefined. It repeats itself every 180 degrees, which again is different from um, sine and cos because they repeat themselves every 360 degrees. But as you can see, I've actually got two graphs in here. And they two are identical. Okay, so let's have a look at the amplitude. So we can increase our amplitude, if you like, and let's have a look at it. So that number at the front of the graph is talking about the, the amplitude of the graph. So what effect does it have? And that's what we're going to look at just now. Okay, and what happens if we've got a negative in front, for instance? So let's have a look. There's sine again. Maximum value at 90, minimum value at 270. Crosses the x-axis at 0, 180 and 360. But what happens with sine, uh, with 2 sine x? So there it's there. As you can see, it's been stretched up up and down that y-axis. Okay, so we're moving that 2 at the front. Gives you a maximum value out of 2 at 90 degrees and a minimum value of negative 2 at 270 degrees. 3 sine x, we're going to stretch it even more. Okay, so what's happening to the height of the graph? Maximum value of 3, minimum value at negative 3, again at 90 and 270. A half, we're squashing it a wee bit. Okay, so the effect the number at the front does, it stretches it up and down the y-axis. Okay, it affects the maximum and minimum values of the graph as well. But what happens with a negative? Now, this one actually flips in the x-axis. Okay, the maximum and minimum values aren't affected except for the fact that it's got a minimum value at 90 degrees and a maximum value at 270 degrees. So same thing happens with cos. There's the original cos graph. It cuts the x-axis at 90 and 270. It's got a maximum value at 1, at 0 and 360 and a minimum value of negative 1 at 180. 2 cos x is going to stretch it and it's going to have a maximum value of 2 at 0 and 360 and a minimum value of negative 2 at 180. Same for 3 cos x, maximum value of 3, minimum value of negative 3. 
same for 0 0.5, but because it's a half and it's less than one, we're actually squashing it, okay? And it's got a maximum value of a half at, at um, 0 and a hundred, 360 and a minimum value of negative a half at 180 degrees. So that's the effect that it has. The number at the front have on the graphs, it either stretches or compresses it along the y-axis. And again, if you've got a negative in front, it flips it in that axis and it turns it upside down. So you, it doesn't have any effect of your on your minimum and maximum values of the graph, but it does have an effect on where they are. And the maximum values at one at 180 and the minimum is at negative one at zero and 360 degrees. Okay, so if A is greater than one, it stretches it in the y-axis. If it's less than one, it compresses it. And if it's negative, it flips it. So I was just giving you a, um, a recap of that because it's quite a lot of information to take in. Okay, and the A at the front, Again, it could be any letter, it doesn't have to be an A, but the letter at the front represents the amplitude of the graph. Right, so sketching the graph. What I would, what we would like candidates to do is we would like them to draw the axis first, okay, then draw the, the original sine or cosine graph, okay, and then fill out the scales. Okay, so by doing, by following these steps, Drawing the, the graph of 5 sine x should be quite straightforward. So we'll draw the axis, first of all. We'll then sketch the shape, OK? Because it is just a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll put in 0, 180, 90, 100, sorry, 0, 90, 180, 270, and then 360. And we'll just use the values because that's our key points at these graphs. And then obviously we'll put in the 5 and minus 5 for our uh, y-axis. So the maximum value is 5, the minimum value is negative 5, the amplitude is 5, and our period stays the same at 360. Right, so the period of the graph. This time what happens with the number in front of the x? Okay, and let's take a look at it. So we've got sine x there, it's there. Okay, but what happens if we've got sine of 2x? Now, this affects the period of it, so that this must mean that with that 2x in there, I want it to repeat not every 360 degrees, I want it to repeat every 180 degrees, and I end up with two graphs, hence the two, the sine 2x. Okay, so 4x will have the same, but again, I'm going to take that 360, I'm going to divide it by 4, so I want the first full cycle to happen between 0 and 90 degrees, okay, and then I want it to repeat, and it looks like that. Okay, and I should have four full cycles. A half x, now this one's different. Okay, I only want to see half of the graph up to 100, 360. So the, f the full cycle should happen up to 720, but I should only get half of the graph up to 360 degrees. And the other there. Okay, cosine is the same thing. So we'll draw in cos. Okay, if I've got two, it's a cos of 2x, I want it to repeat itself twice. So again, take the 360, divide it by 2. You, I want the first full cycle up to 180 degrees. There it's there, but then I want it to repeat. 3x, again, take 360, divided by 3. I want my first full cycle to 120 degrees. There it's there, and then I want it to repeat again. And I should have three full cycles up to 360 degrees. Okay, so that period tells you how many times it repeats itself up to 360 degrees. Okay, and it's the B. We would take the 360 divided by B, as I've been, been saying, to find the period of the graph. Okay, now, vertical transformation. So this is where we're going to move the entire graph up and down the y-axis. Okay, so the amplitude, the A at the front, squashes it or stretches it. The B will tell you the period of the graph, how many times it... A repeats itself for how many cycles there are in 360 degrees, and that C at the end shifts the graph up and down the y-axis. Right, so let's take a look. Right, so what I would like candidates to do is I would like them to sketch the graph of sine x first. They know it, they're comfortable with it, and then draw me the graph of sine x plus 1, because these graphs can be, get quite complicated if we add in an amplitude, a period, and a vertical shift. Right, so we want to move all of it up one by every single bit of it up by one, which affects the maximum value and minimum value. As you can see, I've now got a maximum value of two at 90 degrees and I've got a minimum value of zero at 270 degrees. The amplitude is one, okay? Again, you take the maximum value and the minimum value and you can divide it by two because you're taking the average, so it's one and then your period is still 360 degrees. I haven't touched that. Right, so cost of 
minus 2. Again, I would like candidates to draw in um, cos x, they're comfortable with it, and then take the whole graph and shift it down by 2, which will affect the maximum and minimum values. The maximum value is 1, and that's at 0 and 360. The minimum is at minus 3, at 180. We've still got a period of, um, a, sorry, an amplitude of 1, and then a period of 360. Right, so here's a, a, a fairly complicated one. We've added in an amplitude, we'd have, we've added in a period, and we've got a vertical shift. So, first of all, what I would like them to do is like them to draw the first graph of sine. Like I said, they're comfortable with it, and they should have the key um, features of sine in there, so 90, 182, 70, and 360. Then deal with the period, okay, because I want the first full cycle up to 180 with sine 2x, okay? And then I want them to deal with the amplitude, so stretch it. I want it to go up to 3 and down to negative 3, okay? And what if we've, we can give them here is 3 sine 2x, and then I want them to move it down. So take the whole graph and shift it down by 1. And there's your graph there, okay? And at this stage, you could pick off, sorry, your maximum value and minimum value, and then your amplitude and period if you wanted to, okay? So the A is your amplitude stretches it or squashes it in the y-axis, okay, your negative will flip it. B is the period, so how many cycles are there in 360 degrees, and that C will shift it up or down the y-axis. Okay, well, last one, the horizontal transformation, it's called, also called your phase angle. Okay, now this is going to shift it left or right. Now, it's actually a correctional value, so it doesn't move it in the way that you th you logically think it, it's going to. So, the plus, if it's a plus, a plus in the bracket, then you're going to move it to the left again, which is quite counterintuitive, but as I've said, it's a, a correctional factor, so you want to move it back to the original graph. So plus moves, moves it to the left, negative moves it to the right. So let's take a look at one of these graphs. So, cos, like I said, I want, would like them to draw me the original graph first. So 0, 90, I'm going to draw it in because my graphs are never the best. 90, 180, 270, and then 360. Okay, that plus is going to move it to the left by 30 degrees. So I actually want it to start at minus 30. Now I'm going to shift it. I'm going to change my colour so that you can see it. Okay, I'm literally going to draw my cos again. Okay, now that should be minus 30 it starts at. Okay, I'm then going to take... 30 off of the 90, I'm going to take 30 off of the 180. So that should be hitting the minus at 150. Take 30 off of the 270, so in there should be 240. And it'll finish at, it'll finish at 330. Okay, and then keep going. Okay, so I hope you found this video beneficial. If you need anything else, please get in contact with us.